Four of five offensive line starters return at Washington, which uh, bodes well for improving what was a mediocre line in 2015. We bring in Jack Fullman from Pacific Takes to help us break down uh, the Huskies up front. Jack, uh, Miles Gaskin, of course, a 1,300-yard rusher. Most of uh, A lot of what he did was on his own, but still the offensive line deserves much credit for that. So the run blocking, better than average probably, but the pass blocking, uh, I know that they were seventh in the Pac-12 in sacks, and that's without throwing the ball a whole lot. So it's probably worse than that, but there's hope for uh, this fall. There definitely is. There's a lot of talent and a lot of experience on that Husky offensive line coming back. It's really a question of, you know, are they going to build on what they did last year, starting two freshman tackles, which you just don't see that often. Uh, If they're going to build off the experience they got last year and kind of become that unit that leads the way for a 10-plus win team that they a lot of people think they're going to be or not, that's kind of the big question. And doing a little bit of research before we came on, I saw a shot uh, that was posted on several websites of Trey Adams' uh, and uh, Coach Peterson walking off the field at the Coliseum after the big Thursday night win against USC. Of course, Trey Adams thrown into action as a true freshman at left tackle, started nine games. So it kind of starts with him in in, in regards to um, the, the future being bright. Yeah, if you uh, look back at Washington's recent past, the one thing that's really been missing on the offensive line is they haven't had those six, seven, six, eight, just, you know, monsters that, you know, other teams have had, not even just uh, in the Pac-12, but around the country. And Adams is that guy. He has the potential to be that guy that they haven't had, who's, I think, six, eight, maybe listed at six, seven, and over 300 pounds, and, you know, was able to start at the toughest position on the line as a true freshman. If he, uh, he has some injury concerns, I think, uh, coming into the season, but if they can get him healthy he has the potential to be the best offensive lineman they've had since i mean you could almost go back to you know the jim lambright years of the 90s since they've had a guy like that yeah somebody like lincoln kennedy Uh, that's that's reaching way up there i know uh looking at the personnel other than um adams uh, how does it set up uh, along the offensive front we know that four or five starters are back yeah, so uh, left guard, they have uh, Jake Elderkamp, who I think is going to be a second year starting. He's pretty much known as a reliable, not a star star potential guy, but reliable. The kind of one of the key factors is Coleman Shelton, who's a versatile junior who in the last two years of his career has played guard and tackle is going to move over to the starting center position. And if he tr- uh, transfers there, well, that will really be a huge uh, boost for an offensive line that wasn't very good in the middle last year. Uh, then at right guard, you have Shane Brostek, who is a senior who's been in the program for a long time time uh, played really early as a true freshman just never has seemed to put it all together so he's kind of a, a wild card there then uh, right tackle is another six seven six eight guy and and Caleb McGarry who started as a redshirt freshman last year who's along those lines of Adams of the really long athletic you know basketball player looking tackle that the Huskies need to have develop if they're going to turn get back to being a, an elite team Jack, I don't know if you caught this, but uh, college football guru uh, Phil Steele has this team ranked in his preseason top 10. And so, and I, so I'm guessing yeah. that a lot of this, yeah, I'm guessing a lot yeah. of this has to do with not just this line improving in a silo, which you would expect when four or five starters come back, but but also with the first-year running back, Miles Gaskin, having to acclimate himself to the line and how they work together. Jake Browning in his first year last year, working with the offensive line, maybe being better at getting the ball out of his hand. All those things kind of coming together, there's there's a lot of potential there. Yeah, and this offensive line unit might be the key unit. Because on defense, I don't think there's any question about what the Huskies should be able to do with who they have coming back. Uh, Browning and Gaskin in the backfield, they really made strides as the season went on. And the receivers and tight ends, there's there's some talent there. And, you know, it, to me in college football, the offensive line is a lot more important than who you throw out at receiver. And, yeah, there's going to be a lot of pressure on this unit to make – Uh, those high expectations come true. The potential is there, but 
been a long time since we've seen the Washington offensive line really put it all together. So, uh, you know, the historical odds are stacked against them recently, but I think there's more talent there than there has been in a long, long time. All right. Husky fans hope not to hear some of these names, but for 2017 and beyond out of Bellevue, you've got Henry Roberts, 55th ranked uh, tackle in the 2015 class who may get, get some playing time. Luke Wattenberg out of California, four star 32nd ranked tackle, according to ESPN in this past February's class, Nick Harris, also a three star who most likely will red shirt. So Washington along the offensive line, Jack Fullman from Pacific takes helping us break it down. What uh, could be uh, one of the more improving lines in the PAC 12. Thanks a lot, Jack. Thanks Mark.